Hey Taurus, TT here with another channel message from Spirit. Before I get started, the good Lord told me to tell you, Taurus, patience. Pace yourself. All right, pace yourself. Do not compromise your peace. Do not compromise your integrity. Do not compromise your sanity to pursue or invest in any person, place, or thing. Okay. So this message is for my Torians that have been making investments. Okay. You've been making investments. You've been, um, you've been laying seeds. You've been sowing, um, sowing into this investment. You've been putting in a lot of time. Um, and things may be just now starting to come into fruition for you. Your hard work is paying off your harvest season. is just around the river band. <laughs> All right, I'm here in Pocahontas, so just around the river bend, there's some type of rewards, there's profits, um, financial profits, residual profits, a lot of payouts, okay, results of your manifestations, okay, um, your manifestations, your ideas, all of this is they're all coming together. It's all about to make some type of sense. For some of you, I see you collaborating with someone else. And through that collaboration, it's supposed to also, you know, it's just like the the fruit that just keeps on giving. Okay. The tree that just keeps on giving. Some of you guys have really tapped into like this residual, these residual streams of, of income. But when I say residual streams of income, I'm talking about I'm talking about like life purpose type of things. A lot of you are stepping into these roles of leadership where you've obtained some type level of experience and now you're about to become a teacher you're about to collaborate and share wisdom in a different form it's going to be very different but you're about to receive some type of download if you haven't already you're going to start receiving dreams of yourself living um a manifested life you're going to start receiving um like clairvoyant visions some of you is going to happen in the middle of the day where you're just sitting and you're like oh my god i just had a deja vu moment a lot of deja vu picking up you're going to feel like this the um like the spirit is upon you some of you may feel an anointing or you may feel like you know the holy ghost come over you is what some people might call it um whatever resonates for you it just feels like you are you're really tapped in and you're really tuned in to benevolence, okay? And when when I'm saying that, I, I feel like your, your only responsibility in this next season is going to be for you to maintain, consistently nurture something, okay? So let's say you started that, that business or you started that relationship and you need to nurture your body. So you're being prepared for marriage. Some of y'all are being really prepared for like a long-term marriage relationship like the last one some of y'all will be physically married some of you guys will have an unorthodox type of marriage but there is some type of shift coming in so if you've been feeling the urge to um you know really prepare your 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 womb energy if you've been feeling the urge to go back to doing some type of body sculpting you've been doing on yourself um this is physical things so i feel like if you're if you've been feeling the need to like manifest your home to look a certain way that invites another partner you've been doing a lot of self-care um with yourself okay Including yourself and your love rituals, I'm hearing. <clears throat> you could be a mother. But it's like you may be a mother. Some of you are mothers and business women, okay? Um, majority of you are. For those of you that are masculine tours i feel like you may marry a business person like you may marry someone or be in a long relationship with someone that like does it all jack of all trades okay um so whatever hard work you're doing spirit's message to you taurus is keep doing what you're doing because it's paying off it's it's happening for you and though you may not see it some of you can some of you can't it is coming okay the harvest is coming whatever whatever is making you feel like it down 
Expelliarmus. That's all I'm going to say. Send it, send it where it wants to go. Send it packing, Taurus. So if you're new, welcome to our little love nest over here on Talk Taurus Tarot. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm just channeling if you are new to this channel. If you would like to join my Tarot for Moms channel, that link is in my bio or in the description box down below. Um, more videos will be coming out on that channel too. So we got forgiveness and this wants to come out. Spirit telling me to take it and per perseverance. Taurus. So this might be a hard thing to do. Okay. I'm seeing here, whatever this is, this might be something that's hard to let go of. But it's time to let go of this thing. What is it that Taurus is having a hard time letting go of? Excuse me. Someone in your family could be passing away and it's hard for you to let go of that. That person or someone that you love. It's hard for you to, um, some of you may have had a. Okay, let me go out, go out and say it now. Someone here, you could be an older Taurus and your child could have said some hurtful things to you or they could resent you. And you may be trying to get your child's forgiveness. For those of you that are older, more mature, mothers um, specifically, if you've been trying to, you know, get your child to reconcile with you or forgive you and they're not talking to you, maybe they're mad at you about something that happened to them, you know, while you were trying to overcome your own childhood wounds or you were trying to overcome your own situations, I feel like, um... That person may reach out to you wanting reconciliation or they may want to express themselves. Um, this feels like like mother and daughter or, you know, a really close person to you that you can you love this person. You took care of them like you um, you wanted nothing but the best for them. It feels like they may express to you, you know, like something hurt their feelings. Um, and it may be hard to hear them say that, but I do feel like spirit is asking you to have a, keep an open mind and listen to your child's perspective. For those of you that may be dealing with that, um, I take it spirit really wants me to go over to my tarot for moms channel because this is pretty specific. Um, and I know that, um, like that's where I'm being called right now because something's about to happen. There's some type of um, premonition that I received personally. And this is kind of reminding me of that where you may be able to see like someone following in your footsteps or repeating a certain pattern that you did when you were younger and maybe they're not really listening to you, Taurus, or willing to hear you out. Or this could be you, Taurus. This could be the relationship you have with your parent. But there's something about reaping what someone has sown and kind of like not wanting your children to have to go through the same things that you went through. Um, and I know on this journey, especially as millennial children or just offsprings of a certain generation you know we tend to reconcile with our past a lot differently we take our scars with us and we use it as a tool or as a resource to improve our life and improve our personal experiences out of like a way to strengthen ourselves but I can kind of see here someone's grieving with the th their their latter days okay grieving with their choices of their latter days that may they didn't have a rule book um so either you didn't have a rule book Taurus or your mother didn't have a rule book and it's difficult to you know forgive yourself this feels like a Taurus trying to forgive themselves for what they did not know or what they allowed to happen in their environment okay this child could have grew up in a seeing a lot of things witnessing you be abused witnessing you being treated a certain type of way Taurus and you are concerned that your child may repeat that cycle and it could be coming up like um 
you know, like it hurts. It feels like it hurts to see something happening. You don't want that for any child, let alone your own. Um, so I see you going through that grieving process of forgiving yourself so you can continue to show up for your child or your own children in a better version of yourself. But this forgiveness feels very divine with this message here. Um, yeah, it feels very divine. It feels very mature. And it feels like, you know, burying one phase of your of your journey or your experiences and allowing it to take another form and being okay with however the tree comes out you know a lot of times we hold on to a lot of different um a lot of different grief or we hold on to a lot of different guilt around you know my child wouldn't have wouldn't be struggling in this area had I done this and it's, this is like spirit really asking you to forgive yourself, okay? Forgive yourself. Yeah. This is difficult because I feel like someone as well may be like leaving a child's parent and through those transitions, you're, you're concerned like, will your child always be mad at you or will your child ever like really let you you know will they be okay and and spirit wants you to like um you know loosen your grip loosen your grip to those to identifying with those things that you have done or the things that has been done to you or the things that you have done to anyone else this is really like <sighs> it's scary but like loosen that grip okay let let it open your hands and just have faith. I, I'll never forget. Um, I think this was what 2021. Um, I went through that season of doing that back and forth thing where, you know, I, I was like, I left and then I went back and I left and I went back. So in that season, one of the biggest things of why I kept going back was because I was concerned if, you know, my child would be able to thrive with me pretty much making them a statistic right or me removing them from someone that they were familiar with were they did I shatter their dreams did I shatter their um their hopes and their ambi all the like the picture that they created of their family for themselves and I'll never forget I sat there and I cried. Oh my God, I cried. And I just started pulling cards. And I was like, Spirit, tell me. <laughs> you know, I was just flipping cards. And they got me okay. And no matter how many cards I pulled, or no matter how many times I swung my pen pendulum, the answer was always yes. Yes. And, and Spirit was honest with me. I said, Will they struggle? Yes. Will they make it? Will they get over it? Will they heal from it? Yes. And it was one of those things where it wasn't like, you know, spirit was lying to me and telling me that their journey wouldn't be difficult. But but to have that reassurance from a higher power, tell me that I was doing the right thing. It's the confidence that I needed to really make that transition um, and release that guilt and forgive myself. So even though from this perspective um it's taking a lot of therapy it's taking a lot of you know self-help practices it's taking a lot of I've been having to utilize the self-care rituals that I do for myself with my children and allowing them to pick and choose for themselves it's one of those things where you may not be able to repeat your traditions and and like point your finger at your kids and say do it because I said so when you make these type of transitions in your life your children look at you through a different lens. So it really put me in a position where I had to become comfortable with being a guide for my child rather than a dictator or rather than just a parent. Um, it's easier, right, because of how we were raised to be that nurturer based off of the expectations of our ancestors but because that chain or that link was kind of severed I couldn't hold it up to, to my children to say 
well the only re the reason why I'm telling you this is what you have to do because I did it you're you know I didn't have that reputation to kind of like make me not look hypocritical so because I didn't have that traditional reputation where I stayed in that marriage and I dealt and I dealt with those situations, I had to accept the reality that my children, you know, through my choices, have now bitten from the the, the tree of good and evil or whatever duality. They have a perspective now based off of my choices. It has put before them. The reality where they can see both sides. They've had the experience of, you know, living in that family unit and having those expectations. They've had the experience of living with a single mom and having those expectations um, or having no expectations at all. And kind of like being in the middle, maybe slightly lost and not sure what they should do, who they should, you know, they go through those periods of who, who do I blame? And then you have to understand the stages of grief as well also is transitioning amongst parents and then the children are looking up to us to have answers that we may not have the answers to and one of the biggest things that I had to come to terms with as a parent for my children was being comfortable with saying I don't know being comfortable with saying becoming comfortable with saying speaking up for my flaws and wearing them with pride wearing them proudly um not making excuses for my behavior not you know repetitively saying hurt people hurt people or oh making excuses for my choices but more or less saying this is what I chose these are the these are the cause and effects of my 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 choices and this is where where it has placed us and with that reality these are the options that we have we have a choice in this present moment where we're sitting right now we can choose to you know resent daddy we can choose to do different things we can choose to hold it but the only thing we're giving birth to the only thing that we're creating is our hurt really with forgiveness the only thing that we're creating is a permanent reminder of what's broken or what's missing within us you know what I mean and we can give birth to that through music. We can give birth to that through dance. We can give birth to that through writing a book and sharing our story. Or we can actually create a child. And for many of us, you know, especially me, I do. I can look at each one of my children and I can see how I gave birth to my pain in my children. Um and, you know, I'm not here to debate anything like that. I'm only speaking from my experience, but I can see how each one of my children have a, they have a certain twinkle in their eye where I can literally see my perspective of myself during that time frame in which they were born. So during the time in which I conceived my child, I, each child, I was in a certain headspace. I was in a certain space of of trying to overcome the things that I was going through. And a part of trying to overcome that and cope with it and deal with it, I had to, whether I was aware of it or not, I was putting it somewhere. I was expressing that creation somewhere because I felt like I didn't have any control over my life. And, um... When you don't do, when they say, when you can't do, you cook, right? Or when you can't do this, you teach. When you can't do that, you do this. So when I couldn't get myself out of my own way, I had children. And in that moment, whatever I was struggling with, each one of my children carry like the encoded message or the encoded experience. 
or lens of the eyes that I was perceiving reality through at that moment in time. So when I look at them now, even though I may be, you know, wiser now and I have a lot more un- wisdom now and understanding and understanding, when I look at them, I, I can empathize with them because it's like talking to myself back in 2011, 2014, 2017. It's like talking to myself so even I even though I have aged and my solar returns continue to move and I'm now 32 about to be 33 it doesn't negate whatever work I wasn't willing to do on myself at that time frame I broke a fragment of my soul and I put it into a life and that expression of life is only me And I am looking at all the things that I felt like I needed, that I felt like I was missing or that I felt like I was trying to overcome at those, those stages in my life. So it's easy when you look at your child to say, you should know better. You should do better. You can't really say that because when you were that age, you didn't know better. When you were doing what you were doing, you couldn't see better. All you knew was what you felt. All you knew is that you had to, you wouldn't forgive yourself to get rid of that child. You wouldn't forgive yourself if you didn't do this, you know? So there was a thought process and it took that spirit is saying your, your creations, your children are snapshots, screenshots of your thought process of who you were at that time. So when you having a conversation with your child, Remember, yes, you may not understand the perspective of yourself then, but as the adult, you are equipped through that snapshot of how you can empathize with yourself in that time frame. If you can remember and think back to what you were experiencing and dissect that, you would be able to help your child. You would be able to see things through the eyes or the lens of your child and and you won't lose yourself in the process of trying to be there for someone else. The guide that we feel we don't have was always within us. It was always a snapshot. And this is why just documenting your life experiencing and writing down what you're feeling at that present moment is so important. This is right why writing, you know, memoirs and writing your story and never you know expressing the emotions and not so much as what we think we want to hear is so important it to, it preserves ourselves it preserves the things that we really need to know when we're at our darkest hours so the preservation of you is in your story it's in your testimony and We may not have all the right words to say, but at some point we got to be willing to give birth to these emotions, right? Because when we don't give birth to it through writing, through song, through dance, and we don't channel that energy out of us, we create it. We procreate with it. We give birth to our children. We create legacies of it. We create patterns of it. And all of it is in the DNA. If you could look under, um, if you can look under those thingies or whatever, I can't even think like right now, spirit really got my, got the hand on my neck. Okay. Cause I'm trying to separate, you know, try not to fucking cry. Okay. I'm trying to separate emotion, but That's one of the things that they want me to understand is that you need emotion. You need emotion to, to convey. All right. The absence of emotion has been what's been watered down. What's been removed from everything that's spiritual is emotion. It's easier to say, swallow up your emotions, you know, but it's important not to get too too far into the clouds into our star systems and into our you know soul tribes and so high up in the the sky that we become airheads and we we forget that we came here 
to have a human experience that we came here to be rooted in understanding these patterns we're like explorers on earth and through these explorations the reason why video games that i believe mirror so much of reality like sims and different things like that is because we are essentially um living our video game so i really feel like spirit is saying you know you need to forgive your ancestors you need it you need a relationship to a degree with your offspring and your ancestors the past present and future not to stay stuck in the past um but to reconcile with it and to give birth to it in a healthy holistic way um and you become more mature, right? And Spirit's not saying this for no reason because someone here is about to give birth to a, a business. You're about to give birth to a version of you that is supposed to bring a lot of abundance, not just for yourself, but for many, many, many generations. And it's important that you do what Spirit asks you to do that you document these things, that you embrace the changes, that you allow, you, you know, you allow your ancestors to really connect with you and share with you what they didn't, what they didn't comprehend or those that did comprehend. You allow them to channel through you and you allow them to walk with you. And um, and those downloads that they give you that you embrace it because you are a living breathing expression of your ancestors you have stability anchor you got a lot of red here so this has a lot to do with your 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 first chakra your rooting your upbringing that inner child within you wants your attention that inner child within you that um wants to that wants to dance okay it wants to get up it wants to to express life differently you know some of you you're tired of the institution for others of you you want to cre recreate the institution that was once given to you you want to you want to change the world okay you want to be that person where others come to for wisdom all right uh, some of you um like it's not even about the money like a lot of your family are going to be coming to you for advice now how did you do that how did you how did you overcome that how did you pick up the pieces how did you work on yourself what did you do have you created a book out of it have you created that how to guide are you sharing it or are you ho holding it for yourself and waiting for the right time? It's never a right time. It's always seizing the opportunity that comes to you now. Otherwise, we get stuck into complacency. Unlimited potential. Wow. I think I started off this reading saying, Taurus, patience. If I'm not mistaken, I really believe saying spirit told me to tell you patience and it literally says patience. You know, sometimes, you know, a lot, sometimes, not sometimes, all the time. Be, before I go live, I always get nervous before I show up. Before I speak, before I channel a message, before I do a reading, I always get nervous. All the time. And I pre-record a lot because I don't have to stop and, and look at comments or get distracted or anything like that. And it, it makes it a lot easier to connect in a way. But my environment, I'm very tangible. I feel more than I do. Um, I wait for the emotion. I wait for the feeling to come through me. And then I I speak from that. But 
um, I always get nervous. And when I, one thing I don't do, I will say, when I feel the, that sensation of being nervous, it tries to trickle into, it tries to trigger procrastination where I would be like, tomorrow, 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 or it tries to trigger, you know, fear tries to come up. And it's not so much as that we don't need those spirits, that we don't need fear, we don't need that, but it's being aware of when it has come on you or when you're feeling it, the more that you're aware of it, I feel like the more better you are or the better you become at working with it. Because I I really believe that we can't have light without dark and we can't have dark without light. And we need both of them. The first thing that we like to do is say, well, get rid of darkness. And if we didn't have darkness, we wouldn't be resting. Okay. There's a reason why things happen during the season of, of darkness. And it's important to allow ourselves to experience that emotion, to go through that encounter, to have that experience, to help us tap into the infinite and unlimited potential that exists within us. But if we never want to feel or see the parts of ourselves that are neglected or have been abandoned or have been ignored... We rob ourselves of the full scope we could potentially have on our journey. And I'm saying that because a lot of times the first thing in spirituality that um, a lot of people want to do is, oh, don't think that way. You slow down your manifestation or or don't don't have guilt. Don't have these. Don't experience any of those things. If you can eradicate all those things, you can get there faster. Where are you hurt? Where are you in a hurry to go to? You in a hurry to die? Are you in a hurry to reach the end of this experience? It's important to allow yourself to have that human experience. And human experience does come with grief. It does come with, you know, emotions. It does come with resentment. It does come with stages of being able to process those things. Because through that process of allowing it to come in and allowing the experience and how you made it out of out of it is beauty in that. It's prosperity in that. It's abundance in that. It's create creativity in that. And sense ain't always that common. <laughs> Ain't everybody have it. Yeah. But sometimes when you're always concerned with the welfare of others and how they're overcoming their situations or how they're processing their experiences, even if it's your own children, we can tend to neglect our child within us as well. And sometimes the easiest way to help a child in that phase of their journey is to allow yourself to become that child with them. So a lot of times, what does that look like? If your child is having a moment and they're having a meltdown, it's not always like about telling that child, suck it up, be quiet. That's what our parents did. That's what my parents did. Shut up. Don't cry. Um, Sometimes it looks like sitting there next to that child and crying with them and hugging them and saying nothing. And just being with there with them in that moment. And a lot of you, the reason why spirit is showing this to you is because sometimes that child may look like an adult. And for those of you that are healers and those of you that are 
clairvoyant and those of you that are channels okay teachers leaders ambassadors of your bloodline sometimes it could be your sister brother uncle your own mother father but if you can see what they see through their eyes even if for a moment the divine will give you the words will pour into you the emotions necessary instinctually you will just know what's the right thing to say do feel you know and you would open up like because this is like y'all what y'all don't understand is like this is real like generational type work healing ancestral healing that's occurring right now for those that are of you that are going through this it may feel like it's very lonely it may feel like you're healing everybody else and you walk away depleted but right now in this season some of you your inner child needs you and you could be you know doing your your life purpose work and being there for everyone else the spirit is saying i'm about to sit you down and I'm about to make time for you. And I'm about to take care of your your financial woes. And I'm about to take care of all of the things that you feel. Well, I don't have enough time to sit there with my inner child. I don't have enough time. Spirit's about to give you the time. Necessary for you to do the internal work. And you to come out uh, um, uh, and go through this metamorphosis. Well, I don't have enough money saved up and I don't know how I'm going to take care. It's one thing if I just had me, but now I have a child. How am I going to make it through? You, you just watch and you just wait and you just see and you just be patient. But there's something that's about to be slowed down for you. Wow. For some of you, like, I, I'm literally seeing a premonition of like, the world is about to be shut down again. This is how big it is because this needs to be anchored, not just within Taurus energy, but as a collective Taurus energy, it might hit you differently, Tauruses, where, you know, there's something that's about to happen and you're getting a heads up and and whatever is about to happen is going to affect the entire universe. And in that season, you're being spiritually prepared. Okay, with the wisdom, the prophecy, the understanding for you to be able to guide the people that are about to come to you for you to be able to handle your assignment that's about to happen in your life for you to be able to, to complete something here all right i'm seeing you really like all of these blessings that are coming towards you is for a greater good it really is Mm -hmm. I'm also seeing like traveling okay for those of you that may be dealing with like uh, eviction situations where you maybe you got to move out of a house um, you may be waiting on assistance or something like that you might receive some type of transformation or someone may you might meet like an earth angel on your journey you, and um you know someone might be giving you a car if you need a car i'm seeing that as well to like help you get somewhere it just you're just gonna know that this is divinely guided for you because it's not gonna make sense how that miracle happened for you it's not gonna make sense how you were able to pay for something that you didn't even acquire financially or you weren't able to work for it or you weren't able to see it through yourself this is like the right people are about to be put in your life to put you on a certain path and you you have like 
a heads up to prepare yourself for that transition to prepare yourself for what's coming some of you are going to have a child and you're being prepared and you're going to be put in the proper environment where you have a lot of things working for you and it creates a really good healthy environment for that child to grow within your in your stomach that business to grow that um that destiny to grow within you so wherever you're being whisked off to or carried to i want you to know that this is a di direct order <laughs> six six okay some of you will go back to a hometown or you're going to go back to the country you were born to you're going to be going by water some of you will go to other countries and visit and you're going to help there's a lot that's going on there's a lot that's being repurposed here the so spirit's kind of saying like don't fight this transition don't fight this order some of you may be ordered okay there there seems to be like something else that might be going back um if you're on a visa or something like that you may be called back home and at first it might feel like you're not you don't want to do that but it's like a blessing in disguise wherever it is that you're traveling to or whatever cycles or doors that are being closed or severed spirit wants you to know that it's happening that way for divine order is preparing you you know which let's say for example there was going to be some type of natural disaster or some type of shutdown again And where you would have been, you know, stuck, it would have been far away from your family. You wouldn't have a lot of resources. You have to figure it out, but you really want it to be there. But wherever you're going, you may not want to be around those people. You may not want to be around your parent. You may not want to be around your family members. Maybe they hurt you before in the past. But through severing those old ties from your past lives or past and going back to your ancestors, going back to the people in your family versus the people maybe you were married in another family situation and you had to let go of that family tie. When you feel that call internally, like, you know what? It'd be better for me to get the help through my family. It'd be better for me to get help through. Man, I, I may not even want to deal with them. I may have to you know, humble myself in that season and allow them to teach me whatever it is that they need to teach me. Just being having a generous spirit. Someone's about to be tested. And and it may feel like you're at your lowest. But there's unlimited potential that's intended to come from this. And they want you to continue doing the work. Your hard work is paying off. Um, keep balancing your personal life and your business life and your responsibilities. You're doing a great job. Like I said, some of you could be mothers, fathers, and you're still businessmen, businesswoman, and you're doing two things at once. Um, and maybe you wish you could heal everybody and take everyone's pain away, but they want you to also take time and be concerned with yourself and not always with the the, the welfare of someone else because some of you are dealing with the relationship and like I said you may not be able to heal your partner and you may be able to see their inner child in conflict with their adult self but in that season you can't fix them so you might have to let them go you might have to let them hit rock bottom you might have to let them find their own way just like you're finding your own way and it doesn't negate that you love them doesn't negate that you care for them but it's a reminder and a promise from the universe that the possibilities are infinite and if you feel guided to walk away from a situation whether it's a job a person I don't care if it's even like a passion that you had. Let's say you gave birth to, um, I use myself as an example. Okay. Cause that's all I have is my own personal testimony. Like I said, I think I said this in a couple of videos ago in the beginning, when I first started this channel, my main channel is talk to Keela for two years straight. I tried to push with that particular channel 
and do the work that I felt I was called to do. There was times where I wasn't happy. I wasn't content with, I wasn't, I was content with what I was getting, but I wasn't happy with where I felt like I was being called to go. But I thought from my physical two eyes that realistically, this was common sense. You just keep pushing and it's going to eventually open up for you. But sometimes in these particular situations, when spirit, when I kept getting that divine message, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And I was like, I don't want to talk to all the zodiac signs. And then spirit was like, well, talk to Taurus. And then I was like, well, but I don't want to be unfair. I was more concerned about the welfare of other people than I was for myself. And it was depleting me because I was unhappy doing it. But when I took that pressure off of myself and I said, you know what? I don't even want to do, I don't even want to do it on this channel. I don't even want, I don't even want to talk to the same audience. I don't feel called to be here anymore. I feel like, I feel like I'm not needed there anymore. When I had that situation and it was like a whole bunch of mess with, um, you know, experiences with other readers and different things like that. And not, and, and the rivalry that came with that shit. I said, I didn't want to be a part of the mess. So when you don't want to be a part of something, you remove yourself from that environment and you go where you can thrive, where you can grow. And for a while, I put all of it down and I went to TikTok and I didn't even want to be on TikTok, but I knew spirit was calling me to go on to other platforms. But again, as a tourist, sometimes we can get fixed. We don't like to change up what we feel was once working for us, but If we never are willing to let it go, we won't be able to see how much more we would receive if we could just, damn it, let it go. Stop holding on so hard to it. You know, how we we become like our, we get in our own way. So like I said, some of you in this season, you're going to be called to go through a, um, another death and transformation you're going to be called to show up differently and in order to show up differently you got to go through something or you have to go deep within and with this four of swords you have to reconcile make peace with a memory or a point in your life or time in order to be triumphant So reconciliation is not always reconciliation romantically, but it's also reconciling with parts of yourself that may sabotage, reconciling with parts of yourself that may overwork, reconciling with parts of yourself that may, you know, carry these memories as trophies, as a testament to your, to why you behave the way you behave or why you're better than someone else, or why you're so comp- competitive. There's patterns here that, that want to be addressed. Why you're so cold, why you're so mean, why you're so, you know, quick to walk away from an altercation, or why you feel so frustrated. Something is triggering these things, and it's time to go within about it. It's time to figure out, you know, it's time to confront it's time to confront the demon within every time i see the strength card let me tell you 2021 and demons are not external okay when i say demons these are the things that you're like i don't want to be bothered with that if there isn't something or someone that you can think in the back of your head and say i don't want to be bothered with that for a long time i didn't want to be bothered with my family for a long time i didn't want to be bothered with my mother i didn't want to be bothered what I felt like from when I was a child, they abandoned me. I felt like a lot of things that went down in my childhood, what I should have never had to go through those struggles. I wouldn't have been here or got in that relationship had I not been left to fucking figure it out. I had to go into those wounds and I, for a long time, I used to be like, I'm just going to run away from my problem. I'm going to, I'm going to just keep starting over. Every time you start over and you recreate and you do not process the experiences that caused you to talk, to go down or journey down that particular path, it will come back and haunt you. 
it will come back for you to hold on hold on y'all it will come back for you to reconcile okay like i said it's not always a person but sometimes it's memories of your childhood it's memories of your past it's memories of people that have hurt you it's memories of people that have you know left you to figure it out all right i can see all of these experiences but in order for me to sit here and have this conversation with you today Spirit had to put me through these experiences or help make me realize what I needed to reconcile within myself years before I could sit here and say this to you because I wouldn't have been able or had the perception to be able to convey this message to you because I was still in the thick of it. So Spirit had to deliver me on the other side of it so that I could become a testimony and say, listen, yeah. I experienced the greatest test of my life two, three years ago. I had to reconcile with my family. My relationship with my family is way more healthier. My relationship with my ex-spouse is way more healthier because I had to go into it. So when I see these emotions come up, these experiences come up and the queen of swords is something that can always come back. And spirit wants you to know it's not something that you can get rid of. If you had narcissistic parents, okay, parents that told you to shut up or parents that treated you in a certain type of way where they used your other siblings to compare the both of you and say, oh, that's the good child. You're the bad child. And they did all those things. Those are called narcissistic traits that those parents did to you, which means you have narcissistic tendencies or you have narcissistic traits as well. Undiagnosed or unbeknownst to you, we attract what we are. So a lot of times when we attract narcissistic relationships, we are not always the victim. Sometimes something within us resonates with that brokenness in that person, that inner child that went through the similar things. We are trauma bonding with familiar energy. Thankfully enough, that person came to hurt you deep enough that it will cause you to acknowledge the part of yourself that you've ignored based off of your childhood. If that person wasn't in your life, that soul didn't come in your life and love you enough to be the villain in this story, then you wouldn't be able to experience your good. So forgive Forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness is is the beginning. It's not the end. It's only the beginning. And whatever it is that you're reconciling with right now or you will be reconciling with, it's opening up the door to your greatest harvest. The work that you're doing on your or your on your on yourself right now is is calling forth and manifesting your greatest reward yet. For some of you, you want to be married, you want a child, you want to be able to have that lifestyle. You want the best of both of both worlds and you deserve it. And spirit is saying that the work that you are putting down to cultivate a better season of inheritance your your next child won't have those experiences your children won't have those because you have to be the one to decide if you're going to lay your hands on your kids yes everyone said all the time well i'm fine i turned out fine I'm, my parents whoop my ass did you like it and if you didn't like it you doing the work on yourself will allow you to come reconcile with whatever it is that you felt you didn't like and you get the opportunity to choose maybe you don't want to whoop your kids maybe you don't want to to respond to situations with hostility all the time this is creating space for you to manifest that for you to have that experience and give that child different experiences it doesn't make it wrong okay or the right way it makes it your way so spirit is saying you're creating your way your traditions your legacy 
this is your inheritance and yes you it's also like you're taking things that you did like from both your mom's side your dad's side and you're integrating those and you're creating you know that relationship you want to have with god those traditions you want to have with your deities or whatever it is that you believe in and you're highly supported but as far as like when things are going to happen and how they're going to happen spirit is asking you to be patient and to alleviate that burden off of you that needs to know the day the time the hour in order to feel inspired to do the work in order to feel inspired to continue reaping what you will sow receiving that harvest it's coming okay spirit is saying whatever you are doing for those that resonate with this message keep at it please and that's all i have to say about that i'll see you tomorrow i love you taurus hasta mañana